All right, nicely done, gentlemen, and thank you for a closer look at the user journey to the edge and multi-domain orchestration for cloud-native applications, performance, and security across the ecosystem. Now, with our final deep dive of the day, our experts are taking us deeper into the demands of real-time applications and the role of analytics for customers and providers. The demands of real-time applications, smart data connections, streaming video optimization, and the flexibility to convert legacy and new protocols to support diverse industrial IoT use cases require ultra-low latency, real-time edge processing, protocol conversion, and even local triggering of actions in the multi-service environment. So how will analytics differentiate and demonstrate value to customers and providers? Today, we have three industry experts joining us for this discussion. Please welcome in Dibs Shekhar, Senior Development of Product Development at Comcast Business, Sylvain Cortier, VP Marketing and Product Strategy at Econops, and Eitan Schwartz, VP Service Provider LOB North America RAD. Welcome to all of you, and thank you so much for joining us today. Now, we always start off with intros, so if you would, let's get right to it. If you could share a little bit about yourself and your role within your organization, please. Uh, let's go Dibs, Sylvain, Eitan. Hi, I'm Dibs Shaker. I lead the product development for ActiveCore SGN NFV platform at Comcast Business. I'm Senior Director there at Comcast Business, leading this service for the last four years. Hi, Jeff. So I'm uh, Sylvain Cartier, the VP Marketing and Product Strategy for Equinops. Uh, Equinops is a network vendor. So we are doing hardware and software, and especially software for the uh, uh, edge computing domain. Okay, and uh, I'm Eitan Schwartz. I'm responsible for the service provider line of business here in the US and Canada. Uh, I've been with RAD for a long time, since actually 1991, and uh, very involved in uh, universal CPE and carrier Ethernet over the last uh, 10 years. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you again, gentlemen, and welcome. So here we go, Dibs, let's start off with you. What is a multi-service environment? Sure, Jeff. Multi-service environment can be defined in a couple of different ways. From infrastructure to applications to the different types of traffic that goes over the transport. Now, a better way to understand what multi-service is, is to visualize or think about what customers usually have in their branch locations. Typically, customers in their branch locations have got some sort of transport that can be a broadband or could be a fiber connectivity. Then they have some sort of VPN network that is connecting their sites to the corporate headquarters or to the data centers. And then you have some sort of network security. Security is paramount, everybody has that. So it could be on-premise security or the cloud-based security. And then you have business continuity because all your services, all your applications needs to have 100% availability. So that's your business continuity in the form of either LTE or some sort of uh, wireless backup or some sort of multiple transport types that a customer can have. And then you have voice services. And then also the Wi-Fi services. Most customers have the Wi-Fi and the voice services. And uh, very important piece where everybody, all the traffic is moving over is the cloud connectivity for their SaaS-based applications. So look at all of these things together, you know this is a multi-service environment. That's one way to kind of define what the multi-service is. And the other dimensions to this is on, on all this transport that we're talking about, you have multiple different types of applications that are running over without the congestion or having the right kind of quality, um, quality that these applications need. Now, that multi-service environment, as we're talking about the SGN NFE today, this multi-service environment can be also be virtualized. Many of these functions can be virtualized and be on the same hardware. Uh, but still, this is still a multi-service environment, even in this paradigm. So that's how we're looking at defining the multi-service environment. Fantastic, thank you for that. Uh, as a follow-up question here, can you speak to the challenges that customers and providers face uh, with this multi-service environment? Absolutely. The challenges, I think I would categorize the challenges in many different categories. And because the challenges are many within this domain, within this environment, the very first challenge, very first category comes out to be user experience and how do you troubleshoot 
the services within this multi-service environment, right? So main issue is all about within this multi-service environment, how am I taking care of my applications as well as my customer user experience aspect of the things. And given that the services are closely interlinked and they have so much dependency within them, it is very much possible that these services are impacting each other, which can be impacting the user experience and the application experience. The second category comes down to how are you taking care of uh, troubleshooting this kind of services, which means what expertise do you need to troubleshoot these services if any problems is happening? The problem here is this expertise is no longer a tier one kind of expertise. You need a tier four type of expertise that is going from understanding, okay, if I'm having application issue, this is not just an application issue. It could be related to the network, related to the transport, related to the configurations within any of these kind of services that is there. And then the third category comes down to ease of access and use. Within a multi-service environment, it is also the fact that you have many different vendors, many different application providers, many different products that are available within this multi-service environment. Now, how are you, how is customer trying to access these services? Are they logging into multiple portals? Are they logging into multiple individual um, products one by one? So how are you doing this, uh, um, uh, the identity management, the access management to allow customer to go to one single place rather than going to 10 different places, 10 different portals to, to log in. And, and the fourth piece is obviously about uh, um, the managing the vendors. Now, you have multiple providers who are providing the services to you in this environment. How are you going to manage the vendors and how are you going to manage those products from the perspective of maintenance, the, the, the software upgrades, the hardware management, and so forth. And the fifth and the most complex aspect of all of this is the operational delivery, operational challenges that comes to from the perspective of service providers or from the perspective of managed service providers, right? And those operational challenges are also, you know, if you categorize that, they're delivery challenges, because now if I have to install many services at a customer location, I have to look at coordination, the installation, the scheduling of all the services into one truck role, or am I doing the multiple truck role for all the services? Because if I do multiple truck roles, I'm including, uh, increasing my cost tremendously, right? So how do I manage that coordination to install all the services in one go? Then the second category within the operational support aspect of things is how am I provisioning the services? Because these services have interdependencies. So from the configuration aspect of things, I need to understand which service has a dependency and on the other services, which means if I have overlay services, we talk about overlay in the sense of like voice or the Wi-Fi or SD-WAN, this could be overlay services that are going over and underlay, which could be your broadband with the fiber and so forth, right? Now there are dependencies between the two of them because now you have to set up your uh, underlay services in such a way that it is optimized for the overlay services, right? So there is dependency that I need to know. There's a configuration dependencies that a service provider needs to know. So that there's a complexity that is added because of the multi-service environment. And the third piece is all about testing and automation aspect of the things, right? The services that I'm installing, you know, operationally, I need to be able to test those automatically uh, in an automated fashion rather than a manual fashion, right? So I need to have testing tools available that can do this automatically. And the fifth thing is basically customer support. If an issue comes in, how am I troubleshooting? How am I able to kind of get back to the customer in a way where I know it's irrespective of whose service it is, I as a service provider, it's a one throat to choke. So I need to be able to answer for and be able to provide the right kind of support. So. Wow. All right. So a lot of a lot of challenges there for customers and providers. Uh, Dibs, thank you for taking us through all those. Uh, Aton, let's go to you now. Uh, what is the difference between edge computing and network function virtualization, and how do you see them fitting into hybrid cloud environments? All right. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, and firstly, I, I love uh, Dibs' explanation. Um, I'm going to maybe just zoom into one component of it. We talked about. Um, perhaps virtualizing some of the functions and the complexities associated with that. 
So firstly, what is um, network function virtualization or NFV? Uh, so this is about virtualizing networking functions. Um, so these functions could be firewalls, routers, SD-WAN appliances, and so on. And then uh, also service chaining these functions on a customer prem server or what's called a universal CPE. Uh, one of the advantages of UCP is that it allows you to replace multiple physical appliances with a single device. You know, fewer components can sometimes help simplify the process. Um, as Dip said, fewer truck rolls. Um, edge computing, on the other hand, is more about providing computation and data storage capabilities and providing these capabilities closer to the location where they are needed. So edge computing or computing at the edge is especially valuable when you want to improve response times, right? So you're going to be computing stuff right next to where it's happening, and it also can save bandwidth. You know, you can think of the uh, video streaming. If you can optimize it locally, you can save on bandwidth. Now, if you look at this uh, typical networking slide, it kind of uh, shows the environment uh, that Dibs was explaining. There are many different kinds of businesses and verticals shown on the left-hand side, and each one of them have their own service requirements. To address all these different requirements, you really have to have very versatile hardware that is also very customizable. So going back to that branch office that Dibs mentioned, uh, a remote branch app office, uh, sure, they'll typically require Ethernet and Wi-Fi user connections, as well as fiber or broadband network interfaces, and then perhaps LTE backup. Uh, whereas uh, other kind of locations, for example, uh, IoT applications, for, for, say, smart city, uh, they may require a slightly different hardware. They may require a more ruggedized hardware. They may require different interfaces, perhaps a uh, LoRa wireless connection to sensors, um, you know, pick up gunshot uh, 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 sound and, and, and make it into an event. So customizable hardware is very important, but it's also uh, not sufficient. Uh, in order to simplify the management of the hardware and also all the functions that run over it, you need to have a powerful operating system that can support these two functions, NFV, so it can host VNFs, and also provide edge computing functionalities. Therefore, in this graphic, I'm showing edge computing and NFV capabilities handled at the customer prem, uh, but it's important to note that these could also be handled at nearby gateways or data centers in the access part of the network or at the network edge. Uh, also, when we talk about hybrid, multi, and distributed cloud, as I show, these environments, uh, we're basically saying that the computation and storage uh, can should be provided on-premise, but it could also be at the service provider data center or it could be in public or private clouds, or any combination of these locations, as is actually the case with a hybrid cloud environment. Uh, back to you, Jeff. All right, thank you so much, Aiton. All right, Sylvain, we're coming to you now. Got to bring up 5G here. 5G's coming with the promise to reduce network latency by 10. Edge computing is supposed to remove the network latency bottleneck, so isn't uh, it in contradiction? Yeah, good question, Jeff. Effectively, uh, uh, edge computing is often seen as uh, technologies to uh, to support uh, the ultra low latency use cases like gaming, like uh, virtual reality, and others. Um, <clears throat> in reality, you know these old stories of uh, uh, of the users complaining about uh, application performance. Often, the first thing is they blame the networks. And uh, uh, now that we have 5G. Uh, does that solve all problems that we have in the application performance? In reality, not, because uh, it's not just a question of networks. It's obviously a question of uh, application running in the cloud. And uh, with the uh, cloud computing, uh, the challenge that we had is we move the bottleneck to another piece in the cloud. With the edge computing, you bring the possibility 
to distribute that load into multiple edge that you load balance through the 5G networks. So the combination of both is very important to solve the latency problem globally, not just networks, but also on the computing side. Uh, I can give you um, an example that we had uh, last year with uh, in the connected car uh, business, uh, where in, in that use case, you have uh, the car brands uh, that is sending uh, software update to the cars and collecting in real time uh, data analytics from the car. Um, they were doing that from a single cloud and over the radio network, and at that time it was 3G, 4G, uh, while uh, the car is moving. Uh, so you never know if the car is as a good coverage on the radio side. And at the same time, the cloud, which was one cloud for all Europe, was uh, the bottleneck because you have more and more traffic, more and more data, software update was software package bigger and bigger, data to collect more and more data. So they decided, which is very interesting, they decided to transform uh, the car dealership place as an edge computing. So when the car comes for maintenance, uh, they offload all the data to a system in the garage. Uh, they also uh, upload the software update uh, in the cars. And in that dealership place, uh, we have a system here which is doing the, let's say, the pre-computing of data, really as an edge computing, and then send back that to the cloud at any time later on. So that's a good example of uh, the uh, uh, the, car com the, the, the usage of and the value of edge computing. We add also another one, which is quite interesting. It's uh, in the fresh food uh, grocery. So you can ask yourself uh, what fresh food is, is doing with edge computing. It's a quite interesting use cases where um, that customers has multiple stores uh, in France and they manage fresh food price as a marketplace. It means that the price can change in less than one minute. And uh, the price the price has to be updated live in the stores. And of course, when uh, a consumer uh, buy take a potatoes from the store, uh, 30 minutes will pay it. It has to pay the price it was 30 minutes before. So it's cr completely crazy use cases. But in fact, when you think about it, you need to update the price real time. They add also some cameras to capture uh, the price live and send that back to the uh, to the cashier. So you have a lot of computing in the stores uh, that is also back up with uh, the marketplace pricing in the cloud. So here again, you need a local computing close to the uh, to the source, and that justify that uh, uh, you combine you know 5G networks and uh, local computing uh, to allow those use cases uh, happen. Wow, really interesting. Thank you so much for uh, sharing those uh, examples too. It's great. All right, Aiton, uh, let's go back to you, uh, if you would, sir. Could you please provide an example of how edge computing pairs with networking functionality, such as security, SD-WAN, and wireless technologies? Sure, sure. Firstly, I love that supermarket uh, example. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of issues where they don't have the right pricing and having to take have, send somebody back to check what price is written there. It would be great if it was all automated. But going back to my question, um, so there are many other applications that can benefit from edge computing. Um, and then most of them require secure and redundant connectivity over wireline and wireless networks. Um, for example, a bank branch may need secure network connectivity for their regular business traffic and transactions. But they also may need it to control access to their building, provide redundancy for their alarm systems, and so on. So imagine such a branch, they probably have some ATM machines and video surveillance that could also benefit from edge computing to optimize and store surveillance video streams locally, but also separately from the more vulnerable cameras, maybe in the back office, right? And then they could also simultaneously forward only what's relevant over the network. And in that case, save bandwidth, right? If the store is closed, there's no movement, no need to continuously uh, stream uh, traffic back to the, the cloud. Um, other examples can include retailers. Uh, perhaps they'll use uh, edge computing and sensors to track inventory, maybe farmers. They can use sensors to monitor soil and environmental conditions. And then they could actually even do local compute actions, uh, for example, turning on some sprinklers. 
Another example is industrial manufacturing. Um, so those kinds of companies, oil refiners, all of these companies that are collecting data from sensors. You can imagine drill bits or manufacturing equipment that if it starts to vibrate, it, it starts to indicate that it, ha it requires a maintenance window, right? If it's making a loud noise. So if sensors can pick that up, you can take action before damage is caused. So you can collect that information if you can do it locally, uh, if you can analyze it, and then immediately and actually autonomously, irrespective of your connection back to the cloud, take action. Like, for example, shut down industrial equipment to prevent catastrophic failures when safety parameters are exceeded. So if we go back to that slide again that we showed earlier, we can now see how customer prem equipment is really important. It not only provides that local Ethernet and Wi-Fi support, but also it provides the IPVPNs, the SD-WANs, the firewall uh, for connectivity, both to the service provider and ultimately to the clouds. And then for the industrial IoT use cases, it helps for the CPE to have additional interface options, such as LoRa, as well as ruggedized options. And finally, the edge computing is key because it provides the flexibility to run different third-party software. We have so many of these cases in our, in our critical infrastructure where there are companies that have perfected software that knows all kinds of legacy sensors in buildings and so on. So you can run that third-party software locally and, and provide functions such as protocol conversion, predictive maintenance, and video stream optimization. And so just to end off, if we zoom into the solution slide a little bit further, we see how there would typically be an operating system running on various hardware options. This is, this is considered the disaggregation model, where you can have a single operating system and a variety of hardware platforms, uh, and in this way address multiple businesses and industrial IoT use cases. And then going back to the operational issues uh, that, that um, Dips mentioned, you want to be able to do this with consistent automation, life cycle management, uh, networking capabilities, and so on. Uh, thanks. Back to you, Jeff. That's great. I'm just loving all of these real world examples here. We're talking cars, supermarkets, retail, banking, industrial manufacturing, uh, so many applications here. Thank you so much for that. Uh, A10. Back to you, Sylvain. So SASE, SD-WAN, 5G, NFB mentioned, how is everything linked to edge computing? Yeah, um, so they are linked um, in many ways. Uh, if, you take, uh, if you take SASE, for example, um, you know, it's really where, in fact, uh, uh, the branch and the edge uh, meet together. You know, we, we said in that uh, the title of this, uh, this event is uh, bring back uh, the cloud to earth. It's exactly about that. Uh, SASE, that is uh, the security features uh, that is now uh, extremely demanded by, by customers, is about uh, uh, securing the branch with cyber security features that can act locally by uh, studying and analyzing the traffic and eventually block a traffic that is uh, not something suitable for, for the networks. So it can act locally, but also many SASE features are coming from uh, gateways that can be hosted in the edge and act in real time, close to real time, to bring a more intelligence uh, to the uh, to the branch to take some decision. So SASE, Gateways, Edge are very matched together. Uh, SD1 is closely the same. You know, SD1 story is about to uh, create overlays and connect branch together, uh, connect two uh, two stores, two uh, two bank office uh, together. So obviously, you do not connect directly both together. You're going through an edge through Gateways again. And here, um, uh, you will uh, you will have uh, extremely good latency if you manage to get this edge the closest of those uh, branch side. So here as well, uh, edge can help uh, the SD1 use cases. Um, 5G, we talk already, we took already some example for 5G, uh, but at the end, what is very, very key on 5G is uh, contrarily to 3G, 4G, that were considered as backup networks uh, for uh, the enterprise when the primary networks have an issues. And now 5G is really considered as a primary network in many cases. So 5G will become a predominant technology to link the branch uh, with, uh, with the age in, uh, in any industry. 
Great. Thank you, Sylvain. Uh, Eitan, back to you. Why is edge computing and IoT important for service providers? Well, firstly, edge computing is, be, is, is fast becoming a very popular way to enable new enterprise services. We spoke about a number of them here, uh, the supermarkets and so on. Um, and uh, so it's new enterprise services and use cases. And I think this is especially in the IoT and industrial IoT spaces. Uh, both edge computing and IoT are forecast to be huge markets. Um, I've looked at uh, studies that, that talk about them approaching trillion dollar valuations with thousands and even millions of sensors per project. So this is a perfect opportunity for service providers who can leverage their existing infrastructure, their networks, their data centers, as well as their relationships with enterprise customers. It is you know, relevant to cellular providers as they build out their 5G, but also for other service providers leveraging wireline and wireless options, such as fixed wireless, CBRS, and LoRa. So I see edge computing as a great opportunity for service providers to target services to verticals, such as smart city, connected industry, connected buildings, uh, the transportation, you know, smart roads and so on, utilities, lots of different kinds of utilities, smart meters, things like that, uh, smart agriculture, and, and so on. Finally, I think it's important for service providers to be able to negate competitive industrial IoT threats. And this could be coming from private wireless and over-the-top type alternatives, uh, such as IPVPNs and SD-WAN directly over the internet. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Aiton. Uh, Sylvain, we're coming to you for a quick question here, and then Dibs, we're back to you to, to bring us home. Uh, so Sylvain, when and how will the edge computing economic model match the expected value? Uh, good questions, you know, uh, economical model is the, the beginning of, of everything. If you want to reach a, a math market and mass adoptions, that economical model must fly. Um, um, and I see three conditions. Uh, the first one, uh, on the technical side, uh, we, uh, we have to find solutions to, uh, to, to be sure that we can maximize the performance uh, of an age uh, with a minimized uh, hardware uh, capacities. And we have seen some use cases in the past, especially in the virtualization domain, where uh, there was so much demand of resources, it's difficult to, to get uh, uh, a viable uh, economical model because of the cost of, of the solution. Uh, that's the first point. Uh, the second one is simplicity. Simplicity is absolutely key. Uh, again, it's a good parallel to, uh, to study what happens on the virtualization, ASEAN and AV, uh, uh, world where uh, at the beginning the, the use cases were so complex it was difficult to match really uh, a business value of it. So simplicity will be very important uh, on, on this aspect and last obviously uh, it's uh, the value that you get on the use case. So um, here with uh, with Etan we have shared few use cases that really uh, demonstrate the value of it and, and again I think the, the example of virtualization is very interesting you know, uh, the promise of virtualization eight years ago was to have a kind of a service stores that you can download on your branch at any time. It won't, it won't work really, but today, virtualization has definitively found its place with the branch consolidation, with a very easy model to merge multiple services in one box in an easy way. And I think when, uh, when we will see uh, uh, some simplicity, uh, value proposition, uh, and a good match between software and hardware and edge computing, it will be massive. But definitively, it will come. Uh, we see now, you know, at the beginning, it was always uh, gaming, virtual reality, but now we start to see connected cars, groceries, banking, industry use cases. So definitely, the uh, economical model will fly uh, very soon on, uh, on the edge computing side. All right, good stuff. Thank you, Sylvain. And Dibs, the final question is yours. How do we differentiate with analytics in a multi-service environment? So I was listening to what Aiten and Sylvain were talking about in terms of edge computing and the IoT. The major use case there is obviously about analytics. How, we, how are we deriving intelligence from the data collected by the sensors and the smart meters to come to a decision? 
Now, how we differentiate with analytics, the first thing to understand is what are the challenges that we see today? And the biggest piece that you going to have is the velocity and the volume of data that's coming from all these different types of meters, the sensors, the network by itself. So in a multi-service environment, the ma major use cases that analytics will offer, and that's what those are the differentiation in that regards, are how are we collecting the information? How are we aggregating the information? How are we correlating and building the dependencies and the context of all the data that has come together from different types of providers, which is providers in this case, different sensors, the meters, and so forth. And how are we building the visibility for each of the applications and the user experience from this data that you have collected? Then it's more about the intelligence. So application intelligence, network intelligence, intelligence for the different verticals and the segments that you have to create from the data that has been collected. And this is where the AI, the ML aspect of the things is where the differentiation lies. And then the big piece is the biggest use case, which is differentiating is the early warning kind of system. So irrespective of the vertical, what are the early warning systems that you want to build in so that everybody becomes proactive, whether it's a customer, whether it's operations, whether it's a providers, you need to build early warning systems for different types of use cases, whether it's applications, whether it's IOTs, whether it's any kind of uh, um, retail segments that you have. And then the root cause troubleshooting, right? The biggest piece is the root cause troubleshooting, how the AI and ML can enable the root cause troubleshooting where it is prioritizing all kinds of issues that is happening in the network, but it's only giving you the top five or top six that are service impacting and allowing you to kind of predict and prescribe what that issues can be. So that, that's the way we see the, the analytics to be the differentiation in the marketplace. Back to you, Jeff. All right, thank you so much, Dibs. And with that, that's gonna do it. That's a wrap. We certainly appreciate you sharing your time and talent with us today. And to everyone watching, we hope you enjoyed this deep dive.